this time on Documentify TV. Out here on the plains of Saskatchewan, the wind can strip the heat off your skin in minutes. But drop just a little lower into Waccamaw Valley and the entire world changes. The wind is calmer, the air is warmer. Under this quiet stretch of ground, something interesting surfaced in 2024. A salvage crew was inspecting soil erosion damage. Unknown to them at the time, archaeologists would later recover almost 200,000 archaeological specimens from a single location. To put that number into context, Winoskowin Heritage Park near Saskatoon reached a similar count, but only after 40 years and multiple excavation sites. Garrett reached it in a fraction of the time. But the number isn't the distribution, it's what was inside that count. Bison scapula hose, actual tilling tools, in a region where agriculture supposedly never existed during this time. And in the carbonized food crust on pottery from the same layers, maize starch, corn, cooked here 15 centuries ago. The textbook says, this region belonged strictly to nomadic bison hunters. The Garrett site suggests the story is more complicated. The Garrett site sits on the floodplain of Moose Jaw River, and that location matters. The valley forms a natural heat trap, sheltered from wind, with reliable water, a rare environment on the plains where winter doesn't immediately win. Flooding preserved the site in stacked layers of silt, each one sealing a moment in time. This gives us a vertical timeline, Besant at the bottom, Avonlea in the middle, and Old Woman's Face above, a clean archaeological clock. Across just 72 square meters, plus 117 shovel tests, the density is staggering, potentially over 2,000 specimens per cubic meter, no wonder the count reached 200,000. Most of those items are shattered bone, evidence of large-scale grease rendering. This wasn't a city under the ground. It was an industrial processing hub, a factory floor where bison became pemmican. But the hose? That's the anomaly. Hide scrapers called beamers leave rounded wear. But tools that cut soil develop a high-gloss polish and deep parallel striations. That polish was present here. Then there's the starch, found inside burnt residue on pottery, sealed in place since the Avonlea period. Not blown in, not contamination. Corn, cooked here. And the lithics tell a bigger story. High quantities of Knife River flint, only quarried in North Dakota. That means direct trade between Garrett and the agricultural villages of the Middle Missouri. So here's the trap. If they were only trading for corn, they'd import the corn, not the hoe. You don't drag a tractor home unless you plan to farm. Taken together, microclimate, stratigraphy, hose, starch, and long distance trade routes Everything points toward agricultural experimentation at the edge of what was previously unknown. This wasn't large farming. No fields, no villages like Mandan or Hidasta. But in the sheltered corridor, they may have tried something small but radical. Garden plots. A high-risk supplement to a bison economy. Wanuskowin's 200,000 artifacts represent decades of excavations across multiple sacred sites. Garrett reached that number from acute salvage at a single deeply stratified location. Wanuskowin is the cathedral, Garrett is the factory, and maybe the garden. Newly recovered seeds from the 2024 excavation are now under analysis. If they show domestication markers, larger size, thinner coats, it confirms cultivation. If not, it still reveals an adaptive, experimental people 
pushing the boundary of their environment. The Garrett site dismantles the old idea of purely nomadic north. It shows settlement, industry, experimentation, and resilience. For a moment in time, people stood in this valley and tried to grow what wasn't grown here. They weren't just surviving the plains, they were testing their limits. Now, if you want to see how discoveries like this reshape our understanding of the North American past, there's another investigation waiting for you right here. That's it for today's video, folks. See you next time right here on Documentify TV.